Hey guys, so if you saw my last video, you'll recall that I was dismantling this 37 volt battery and trying to work out how the BMS works. And I've done some more, uh, more testing and I have discovered how it cuts off the high voltage. So the last cells in the series, that's these two here, I've charged to almost 4.2 volts. And the overall pack is sitting at about 39 volts. And so typically in a 10 series pack, each cell should be at 3.9. But obviously, if the last cells in the series are at 4.19, then the others are going to be lower. And so what I'm going to show you now is how the BMS cuts the power as this particular... Um, as these particular cells become too high in voltage. So I only really have one opportunity to show you this because once the cell reaches its over voltage trigger, um, the BMS cuts out the power and it takes it a while to allow, uh, it takes it a while to reset. So this is the voltage of those two cells and we're gonna set this power supply to 42 volts so it's going to try to charge this battery and as you watch it'll show the amperage going into the battery and it'll show the voltage of the overall battery as it as it rises and as this uh, goes up you should see at some point the amps will cut down to zero all right here it goes And there you go, almost at 4.3 volts. And that's a little higher than the specification, which I think said 4.25 volts, but you know, I don't think, I think that 4.3 volts hurts it. So now I want to talk about how it actually does that. So when I looked at this last time, I figured that as the current was coming through, through and returning here when charging that it would have to go through a diode on these two FETs. However, what I didn't realize is that when a FET is turned on that the current can go freely in both directions and that the diode really doesn't cause any issue. And so given that the diode is not an issue, the current can freely pass through here and back to here. Now it's an interesting arrangement because there are two FETs in opposite directions, when um, both sets are turned off, it completely blocks the current. Um, no current will go through the diode. And in the case of having one FET, or you know, a pair like this, usually you would be able to still charge, you'd just be losing power with the volt drop. So these effectively work as a complete switch that can turn the power on or off entirely. I think it's interesting to note that these two from the battery negative can go straight to the power, but that the charging, they seem to have their own, their own FETs. And that would make sense because the charger's voltage is going to be higher and you really need to be able to completely cut out the charger's power. Whereas if it's the power negative, just disabling the, the battery's output is enough to stop that. I guess if I was to hook a charger up here, I would probably still be able to pump power into the battery. So it's an interesting design and it definitely, definitely has a high voltage cutoff for the charging. And I'm pretty sure when I've used this before that there is a low voltage cutoff also. I also wanted to show you guys quickly that if I touch the power supply's negative to the C minus, the charge negative, that nothing happens. But if I touch the power negative, you'll see that those um, those MOSFETs are not blocking the current. So it's really important if you have a charger to have it hooked up to the C- terminal. And also worth noting is that if you hook the power cable up to the power negative, even when the high voltage cutoff has occurred, this is pretty hard to do with one hand. 
you'll see that you still get power from the battery. So, I think the BMS works as expected.